Is it going? Yes, it's uh, going. This is two eight Emily from three three eight A iterated, and this is our post stage reveal. We did qualify for worlds this year, which is a huge leap over last year, and we have a lot more awards. So I'm just gonna go over our robot real quick because it's a pretty cool robot. It's pretty meta though, but eh, there's still some neat things about it. So first, we got regular floating intake for the eyeball and little knockers for the three stack. Keep the three stack can go in and in jamming up the intake. And we can knock them down, pick them up using auto. So this is geared with a 15 tooth sprocket. So that this is 480 RPM and then on three inch wheel. And then these middle wheels are two inch flex wheels, 600 direct. And so flex wheels really dirty. Otherwise it would intake much better because we just haven't cleaned them off. That's a pro tip right there. Clean your flex wheels or else your intake does not work good. Guess who we learned it from? Ben. Okay. <laughs> Next is our indexer ratchet, which actually basically allows us to run the intake, the indexer, and the uh, roller mic all off of one motor, so six motor drive OP. So our indexer basically is just a 12 tooth pinion with a pawl made from a what you call it, a screw and a screw joint, and we had to use this one by three because basically the other pawl would invert itself whenever it jammed. And that was really bad. It actually cost us a tournament, arguably, because we were stressed out and we forgot to plug the battery in all the way, so it kind of came out. Yeah, that's totally the reason. The and uh, so I fixed that. And so that skips really nicely. And see all these little wheels? Don't move. And then, so, the disc in there. They just feed in real nice like that. And then turn the flywheel on, which is direct 3600. With the flywheel weight, the motor goes straight down. There's a ball bearing. There's no bearing here because you don't need it. You just throw the whole lot a little bit extra. The motor will hold it. Then that, and then real smooth transfer through there. And that's why we have these little standoffs and stuff. Basically, it'll keep the disc from coming up because otherwise the disc used to come up like this. And it basically sit in here vertically, but now they can't, and so they have to go through. Um, angle changer, pretty pretty simple. Although I would not recommend this setup because we actually did bend one of the pistons, and that's really bad. So angle changer just goes up like that. This basically keeps it from going up too far to give us that nice little angle for overfill. Although overfill is kind of mid right now, but we're gonna fix that. Don't worry. It goes down, single acting. Uh, roller mech chains are kind of weird. They just wrap up in front. Although it doesn't really cause any extra friction, it's not too bad. Roller mech, we have three wheels. We have two smaller ones. These are mostly used in driver because, well, you know, you want that, you want to be able to pull away at those weird angles. And this one's used for programming, and that's why it's bigger. So basically, if you misalign that one, you can go anywhere on the roller. And if you pull in straight enough, these won't touch the black part of the roller or anywhere else on the roller. So they don't catch and it doesn't affect if this one can spin or not. Because if they're all the same size and this one was on the black part, that's not spinning. But then if the roller's like this, it's touching that. Works all good. This is 100 RPM, by the way. This is 900. It's uh, geared down from the uh, intake. From a 12 tooth to a 24 tooth. And then that runs across to here. And this is reversed through a gear ratio. And it's 3 to 1, so... Here's the other one up, 3-1, one. that's how you get to 900, it's kind of weird. Um, oh, endgame, endgame is pretty cool. So right now our endgame is not wrapped, and I'm not going to wrap it because I'm really lazy. But we have our end up game up all high, which is kind of lame, but it works. It works pretty good, and we haven't shot out in ages, so that's good. And basically what we did that is that we can either fire the these four, or we can fire the extreme angle set. And what we do that is we program one button for each. This one fires the middle. This one fires the side ones. So the way the middle ones work is that there's these hinges right here. And the rubber bands will pull up like this. And as you can see, it won't it won't come loose. And it has it's never come loose and it will never come loose because well first of all I'm taking it apart. So it's not just any more games, but uh this holds it really well. It holds it directly in line and basically just wrap bands up over these. And then when this releases like that, it just goes straight out. These hinges, the rubber bands will pull them up. 
and it'll release all the string and these little things will go flying. Not like that. They'll actually go far. We got mostly ever gotten with this is 24 tiles. And if we just lengthen the strings a little bit, I'm sure I could do full field. And then these bottom ones, they're actually angled down a little bit. And each of these gets their own piston. These all share one piston. These should get their own because I was really lazy and I was building it and I had like one night to finish them. So these have one piston each and it holds the hinge down like that. Hold this out down. Holds the hinge. The same thing as the others. There's a nut here. The rubber band will be wrapped around to here. When this releases, the hinge will flip forward and release them. Um, we used to have a side loader on. We took it off for finals though because we got like one disc stuck in it one time and it kind of messes up in round of 16. Don't worry, it didn't cost us the match. We still made finals and then got our um, butts beat pretty badly. Actually, no, we held, we held our own pretty decently. Well, but, up till the end. Yeah. Okay, and so that's what this, actually this broke too. This and this strap here basically helped line up on the wall. Keeps you from like scuffing into it too hard because otherwise the seat channel just dig in real hard. Um, Side so loader is really good for skills. Has everybody figured that out already? Oh yeah, wedges. So the way we did our wedges, how most people do them, we just take a high strength axle and then we mill down the ends. So that is at an angle, and they sit at an angle on the ground. And then we drilled through them, put a screw through it, and then attach it to this. Our ram bars, you can tell, is pretty beat up. So that's its job, unfortunately. Um, and we had to put zip ties on these, because eventually they'd be touching the ground, and refs would be mad at us and stuff, because we hang over the line for auto. But these zip ties keep it from going over, like that, so they can't invert. And if they inverted, it's going to keep you from driving forward, so you can't do that no more. Um, that's about it. Oh yeah, drivetrain is 6 motor, 450 RPM on 2.75, so 65 inches a second. It's pretty solid. And, yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Mm. Or something. Do I stop it? Yeah.